Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here, welcome back to Gen Sense. It's dirty. I hope you're doing well. Today we got 10 different fragrances that'll have people doing double takes or triple takes or quad Durple takes. Oof, hopefully not. It's like headbanging at a metal concert. These are scents that are gonna reach out and just grab people's attention. You know, they're the type of fragrances that are gonna announce your presence, but in a way that's not harassing. That's, that's not the right way to announce your presence. Harassment, <laughs> no harassment. No. We got niche, we got designer, we have some cheap stuff, some medium price stuff, and, and some more expensive stuff, so a little something for everybody. Just some lovely fragrances today, just really banging stuff. Have them all linked in the description, feel free to check them out down there. Also feel free to check out these codes. Uh, if you would like some codes, yeah, here they are. If you don't like codes, then... What are we doing here? Uh, also, I'm going to be doing a giveaway uh, for you guys here. Just something from my collection that I, I don't use, I don't really have a need for, but I figure one of you out there will. So hopefully uh, it's useful to one of you. It's big, if nothing else. All right, 10 fragrances. You can't walk past you without noticing. Let's kick it off with Halloween Man Shot. Yeah, good old Halloween Man Shot. It's been a minute since I've mentioned this one. Quite affordable and uh, a good fragrance, believe it or not, for fall and winter. With a name like Halloween, man, you figure it should be good for fall. So yeah, you're looking at under $30 US for this one from Discounters, and it's even a larger size bottle, 125 mils instead of your more typical 100 mil size. 100 mils, that's pathetic. Give me 25 extra, please. It has cardamom, vanilla, iris, daiquiri, and leather as some of the notes in the fragrance. Yeah, daiquiri, you don't see that too often. If you wanna boil it down to the simplest of ways of thinking about it, you could view this as a sugary sweet take on La Nuit Alone from Yves Saint Laurent, because it has a similar cardamom mom note in here as in La Nuit. And I don't really have to tell you about La Nuit de Lome being a big compliment puller, do I? No, I don't. So with Halloween Man Shot, there's a lot to love. You don't have to pay that much. The bottle's a good size. It's a huge compliment puller. It's sweet, it's sexy, it's spicy. And because of all those things, you can just spray it on like 70 sprays. It doesn't matter. Because then you can buy another bottle for cheap and it's gonna take you a long time to run through the bottle. It's a win, 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 win. A lot of wins. Next fragrance is a fresher scent. It's from Giorgio Armani. It's Aqua de Jo. Eau de Parfum. And this one, I'm gonna be giving away. Well, uh, not this bottle, but this fragrance. I'll show you in just one second. First, let's talk about this. So Aqua de Joe is Aqua de Joe is Aqua de Joe. To an extent. What I mean by that is pretty much any Aqua de Joe fragrance you can pick and wear, and the vast majority of people are gonna really like it. That is what it means to be Aqua de Joe. It's like the Marines, except absolutely nothing like the Marines. The few, the proud, the Aqua de Joe that friggin' everybody likes. So this one has C notes. Yeah, no big surprise. It has green mandarin, uh, mineral notes, clary sage in here as well. It is a modern take on the original Aqua de Joe. More of an aromatic flair to it, less of a floral flair to it. So basically taking uh, the original Aqua de Joe, making it more modern and frankly, a little bit more masculine as well. So easy to wear. I mean, you can pull this stuff off any place, anytime, and people will love it. Obviously it's geared more towards spring and summer, but you can wear Aqua de Joe anytime. It doesn't matter. It's just so, it's just like the easiest things to wear on earth, I swear. And I'm gonna be giving away this. Yes. It's Aqua de Joe Eau de Parfum, but not in a regular bottle. So I have this. This is to refill a bottle. It's quite large, as you can see, 150 milliliters. And uh, to be frank with you, I'm just, I'm never gonna use it. You know, I'm never gonna need it. And there's no point in me keeping this. Now, I know that if you don't have a bottle, this is kind of an awkward thing to potentially win because like, what are you gonna do with it? You can't refill it. If you do have a bottle, then hey, refill it down the road. But if you don't have a bottle, you can decant this. You know, you could move it into smaller bottles and use it or something, I don't know, man. Be like uh, Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone, just splash it on your face. But I'll give this away later on in the video. I know it's kind of awkward, like I said, because it's not a bottle, but I don't have a use for it. And hopefully one of you out there does. Let me just keep scooting that, make sure it's off camera. So we'll go over the giveaway a little bit later in the video, but for now, let's move on with Carlisle from Parfum de Marley, or as I like to call it, Parfum de Broly. Ooh. Ooh, that smells nice. Carlisle to me is right in the upper echelon of all uh, PDM fragrances as far as performance 
and compliment factor goes. Layton gets most of the hype, deservedly so, for their uh, cool weather fragrances, but Carlisle's right up there with it. You could say it's classier, maybe a little more elegant than Layton. It's not as heavy on the, the sweet spices, but that's not to say it's devoid of, of sweetness or spices because it's got both. It's got a good amount of vanilla in there as well, and Tonka has almost a, almost a kind of tobacco feel to it, which makes sense because it's been compared to red tobacco from Mancera, uh, although definitely not as aggressive as that one. And you have a, a really nice, lightly earthy patchouli in there as it dries down. Great performance, huge compliment puller. Just one of the best from the house. Uh, let's follow that up with this one, Hero from Burberry, uh, Hero Eau de Parfum, which is a scent that, at least in the fragrance community, is kind of a sleeper. Now for your average person, uh, they're probably gonna think, oh, Hero Eau de Parfum? Yeah, that's awesome. But the Hero line in general, uh, not super well loved in the, in the fragrance sphere, we'll say, but it sells really well. Now, Hero Eau de Parfum, this one I think is just fantastic. Really, the more I wear it, this is just an attention grabber. It's got awesome versatility for fall and winter. It's quite woody, as you would expect, because the original Burberry Hero had three different types of cedar. This has a boatload of cedar as well, though maybe not quite as cedary as you would expect when you do see all that cedar in the note breakdown. It'll make sense if you smell it. It's woody and yet not too aggressively woody. But this one adds that resinous, ambery warmth, that extra little dollop of sweetness over the top, which takes it to the next level. It's another one that's impossibly easy to wear that people are just drawn to and gets overlooked a little bit as far as that goes. Back to niche with Nishane Hasavat, which pretty much everybody knows at this point, I feel like. You can get it from discounters for a good price, typically under a hundred bucks. And for the quality of this fragrance and the concentration, extrait to parfum, that is a steal. So you're getting a scent here, obviously, with really good performance, with a similarity to Creed's Aventus. Yeah, right in that right in that wheelhouse. Really nice and fresh, sweet and fruity off the top. And with that performance that it does have, it's one that's really easy to get noticed with. It's one of the reasons it's so popular. They did come out with a new Hasavat X, which I haven't smelled yet, but I do have it on the way. So in the future, I'll be able to tell you if it's better or worse or the same. But yeah, off the top, it has pineapple, it has citrus, bergamot, and grapefruit being the citrus notes, which is what's going to remind you of Ventus when you first spray this on. And then cedar, patchouli, oak moss, and additional woody notes as the fragrance dries down, which some people can pull a little bit of a smokiness out of those as well, which again, ties it in a little bit with the Creed. Still though, nowadays, especially when you're considering the price point, the performance, everything else, I think Hasavat pretty much crushes a Ventus for most people. So this is the one I'd recommend for you. Let's follow that up. Oh. Huh. Ooh. Ooh. Let's follow that up with Dior Homme Sport, the newest iteration, not one of the 73 other Dior Homme Sports. Dior loves their Dior Homme Sport. And Dior Homme, we won't, we won't talk about that right now. So Dior Homme Sport here, this smells essentially like taking Dior Homme 2020 and reworking it, making it fresher, which as with most fragrances that are made fresher with a different linker or iteration or concentration or, or what have you, makes it easier to wear for most people. Now, I loved Dior Homme 2020. I came around, I had to come around because at first I despised it. It was like my mortal enemy. Everything wrong in the world, that was Dior Homme 2020. Until I saw the light. Then I really enjoyed it and it grew on me more and more and more. But that one's a very modern woody fragrance and some people would say too woody for them. I've heard a few people say that. Uh, Dior Homme Sport rectifies that a bit. The woodiness is not quite as aggressive, the fresh spiciness not quite as aggressive, and you get more freshness, more fruitiness, off the top when you first spray it on. And ultimately, it makes a fragrance that's extremely well balanced. It's maybe not the sportiest sport fragrance. It's maybe not quite as shower jelly clean as you may expect or anticipate a sport fragrance to be. But as far as being like a really classy everyday wear fragrance, it crushes it. All right, this next one is one that really most of you guys out there are gonna be fully aware of. And I have heard from you time and time and time again about how this fragrance, believe it or not, is your number one most complimented fragrance of everything you own. And it is the Sony Wave. Yes, 
little nondescript Missoni Wave. Who would have thought that? Well, the bottle's not too nondescript, is it? It's it's pretty colorful. But you wouldn't expect Missoni necessarily to go head to head with like some of the big dogs over here. Yet it does. This is a fresh fragrance, a very clean fragrance, reminiscent of Chanel Alorome Sport or Versace Pour Homme. Only with, in my opinion, a better looking bottle and a much superior cap because, oh, that's magnetic. And it's a good one too. Nice. So summertime, this is just like undefeatable when it's actually available. Because I have noticed over the past three or four months that it has been consistently sold out. So that's rough, but when it's at discounters and you can find it for $35, $40, anything less than that is an absolute steal to the point they should arrest you because that's a crime. Uh, but anything in that price range, this is just an amazing buy. The performance is good. Uh, like I said, it, it's just an attention grabber and holder. Chanel Allurome Sport has sold so well and Versace Pour Homme has sold so well for so long because that style of scent just works. And this, especially according to what most of you out there have said, is like the pinnacle currently of that style. Let's do the giveaway and then bang out the last three. So again, this Aqua de Jo Eau de Parfum, uh, 150 mils, but with no sprayer. Here's what you have to do to be entered in the giveaway. If you like the video, be subscribed to the channel. Leave a comment below, standard stuff. In the comment, just tell me your go-to fragrance that boosts your confidence. Doesn't matter what it is, indie, niche, designer, whatever, just let me know. In about 10 days, I'll pick a winner with random comment picker, throw it up on the community tab of the YouTube channel. And the winner just has to hit me up on there uh, with the same account that they use to make the comment. And then send me your info and I will ship it to you. I'll pay for shipping, all that stuff. After it's claimed off the community tab, I'll remove the post because that helps prevent me getting inundated with scam emails, which happens every time. Yeah. But that's how it'll work. Good luck, whoever wins that. I hope you can make some use of it because I can't. Next one, Parle Moi de Parfum. Wake up world. Wake up world, pathetic loser. Which is almost like a little matrixy, isn't it? You know? Wake up world, it's me, Neo. Ah! Now I love this one myself, but it's for a more particular person than most of these other ones. Now, why do I say that? Is it because it's funky, weird, hard to pull off, poopy smelling, cheesy smelling, anything like that, sweat smelling? No, none of those reasons. More so, it just has a bit of a throwback feel to it, but not in the more typical style of like a, an aromatic fougere that's uh, you know, very oak mossy or something like that. Nah, this is vanilla, it's tonka, it's citrus. You know, it, it's pretty easy to wrap your head around, but it does have a, a strong similarity to Paloma Picasso's Minotaur, which very few out there uh, of you are gonna be like, oh, I know what that is. Most of you are like, what does that mean to me, man? That doesn't mean nothing. It just has this this certain kind of like sweetness to it. The way that it's done reminds me of fragrances from decades gone by, but with a more modern twist. Kind of like Aqua de Joe de Parfum over here. Modern twist. But it's so well done, so easy to pull off, extremely classy, but with uh, that sweetness that just kind of reaches out, you know? It puts a nice scent bubble around you, but it will probably appeal more to guys middle-aged and older. All right, follow that up with something completely different. Lalique White in Black. Ooh, this is, this is good, good. Like this is real good. The problem with this one, it was well, it's not really a problem, but kind of is a problem. Same thing with the um, Missoni Wave over here. As of when I'm making this video, sold out most everywhere, unless you want to pay full retail. Would I suggest you paying full retail? Not if you can find it at a discounter. Is it worth full retail? Honestly, yeah, it is. <laughs> but it's one of those deals where it's like, hey, would you feel better paying 120 for this or 40 for this? Well, it, it, wouldn't you put it that way? I guess I'll, I'll take the 40, I guess. That's pretty much the idea here. Uh, it does come with a gimmicky little pencil. You're supposed to like draw on the bottle. It's, it doesn't even work that well, but who cares about the gimmick? That stuff is fire. Now it's been compared to uh, Layton. So it's kind of in that style. It's very spicy, sweet, really classy, and has this great sparkle to it. So it's not just like dense and heavy and lifeless, even though it's a fragrance that definitely is more for fall and winter time, more of an evening type scent for most people. That kind of just jumpiness of those top notes and in the mid really elevates this one. It is absolutely killer. Got a lot of hype and for good reason, man. White and black is just awesome. Last but not least, Torino 21 from Zerzhov. And I almost said Torino 2021 because Montagna Parfums has 
Torino 2021, which again is just the most egregious, like just out there name. We don't want you to get confused about what we're doing here. So the name's the same. We just put a 20 in front of the 21, just so you know. This is a good clone though. Uh, Montaigne's Torino 2021 is a really nice alternative to Torino 21. So uh, if you want a cheap alternative to this, check this one out. I actually like that a lot. It, it's basically like Torino 21, but if you ramped up the mint just like even further, just really cranked it up to 11, spinal tapped it. So Torino 21, it, it does have a lot of mint. <laughs> just not as much as Torino 2021, but it's got a lot of mint, citrus. It's extremely fresh and brisk. One of the toppest, notchest spring fragrances out there. That's amazing. I love it. Zerzhov does have just some like next level warm weather fragrances. This is one of the best. Might actually be my favorite one right now. And that one is just so otherworldly fresh that it just stands out. You know, it cuts through the crowd, but you do have to like green fragrances. If you don't like them, you may not enjoy that one. So there we are, these 10 right here. This is like the usual suspects, Murderer's Row. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.